All right, today we're going to learn how to fix a broken kayak. Uh, whitewater kayaks tend to break all the time. Uh, it just comes with the sport. They get bashed up on rocks. They wear out from sliding on them all the time, as well as bouncing down some of the steep creeks and slides of uh, some of the rivers. And, you know, once they get worn out or they hit a certain way, they just tend to break. But a broken kayak is not trash. It can definitely be saved. And today I'm going to show you the easiest way to weld with uh, just some few simple tools. There's definitely a bunch of ways to do this. I mean, there are some that you can do on the fly without electricity. Say you're on an overnight on the river. Uh, and there are ways to use a campfire and some common, you know, uh, utensils, spoons, forks, stuff like that. There's also um, mesh netting and G-flex and all these other crazy techniques as, as well as like the duct tape welds and stuff like that. But I'm going to show you how to basically turn this thing back into brand. All right. So right there, you can see that there's the crack. This boat's been cracked a couple times. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill that out, widen it a little bit so it takes more plastic, and then we'll fill in the whole area around it. So we'll build up the plastic all around the crack area. What we're going to do now is disassemble the hull and drill the crack out. And then you want to take all the parts out of the hull, like the seat pan and everything like that, because the last thing you want to do is drill an unneeded hole in your seat or damage the uh, seat pan or seat rail in a manner where it rubs and wears through the plastic under your seat pan. That's one of the flaws of some of the kayak seat pans is if the padding pinches, you know, moves or wears thin, then the plastic on plastic tends to rub through and progressively wear out the hull on the inside. So then it becomes kind of like a double negative. But anyway, we'll take out the interior and start working on this thing right now. All right, so what you want to do it first is get the seat out. So Upon further inspection, I realized they're Allen bolts. So just like so, just unscrew them. Once you get them going, they'll actually move kind of fast. There's a plate inside that falls off and falls down that has the screws. Now, if you're not going to take out the entire interior, be mindful of how you unscrew these because these are just going to plop off and fall down once they're inside. But since I have to take the pan out, it makes no worry to me that they fall down behind the pan because I can get them. Hear that? That was the lower pan. So now these bolts usually require a little bit of wiggling and finessing to get out. Sometimes you need to walk them through the threads a little bit more. Sometimes they go too high and they hit the cockpit rim. But other than that, they should just pop out like so. So there you go. You got the rubber washers on top. You got the other one right here. And then you get the rubber washers on the bottom. That helps, uh, you know, water seal and watertight the holes for the brackets in the boat. So... You usually just put these aside because you're going to need them when you put everything back together. You don't want to lose them. You're going to roll the boat over a couple times, throw everything back and forth. It's pretty easy to kick them around. And if you're in a pretty cluttered garage like I am, ending up under a lawnmower or behind a pile of bikes isn't necessarily that hard to do and could ruin your day and take a lot of time. But anyway, so there's one. And here's two. All right, now that uh, both seat side brackets are... Uh undone we can go ahead and move this seat right out and move the pan and then we can flip it over and start working on the weld sometimes you gotta whack it and turn them sideways a little bit i've worked on this boat in the past so it's not that hard there we go so just like that make sure that these straps are unconnected and then you can go ahead and disconnected from the seat pan itself okay once you get that out just knock that the rest of the way fold this under the lip and you don't even need to take the second side out you can just fold it over and you know the back rest will hold it out of the way now here are these plates we were talking about earlier those are the backings they're threaded that's what holds the seat pan down to the rim of the cockpit from the top and this bolts on the bottom all right, so there's one. Put that over there. There's two. Move the seat pan. This is just like little twist nuts right here. All right, so 
This is just plastic threaded rod, some plastic acorn nuts, and uh, they just hold the pillar right into its little uh, pedestal right there. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna whack that right out of its little pedestal, and then we'll remove the uh, seat rail. <laughs> And now you'll see what the weld looks like from the inside. So there we go. So you can see it's kind of cracked right along the edge of the, the weld. And that's common. The weld itself didn't crack. It actually let go next to it. So we're going to drill it out, flip it over, and uh, work on magic. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill right through it. I know, this is crazy, right? Taking a drill to a boat. So as you can see, the crack was mostly in the yellow. So now we got this all wide and open and really ugly. So what you do now is you take your X-Acto knife. It's like I mentioned earlier about filling the void. If I just filled it now, if you were to cut the boat in half and look at the void, it would just be almost like a solid column. What we want to do is we want to get rid of this edge and kind of you know round it off so that when we fill it if you were to cut it in half it would actually look like an i-beam because you'd have a spillover on the top on each side and you'd have spillover on the bottom on each side and what you want to do is blend it you know around into the natural hull as well as fill the crack so we're gonna we're gonna try working on that let me just put this in a different position and then just kind of you know run your exacto knife down the edge a little bit and just kind of round that edge off that has cleaned up that crack a whole lot more and i know i know what you're thinking oh my god that thing's huge what the heck is he going to be doing to fix this thing what you want to do is take your donor boat and cut strips of plastic so our style if you were to compare it to regular welding it would be like stick welding today so i find that depending on the type of boat roughly a pencil to a contractor's pencil size works good. You don't want it too small because it'll heat up um, too quickly and you don't want it too big because it'll take too much time and heat to heat this up. And when you're warming, you know, your weld here, you may overheat the boat faster than you heat, heat your stick. And, th and that won't, you know, um, that won't be fun to do time-wise. You'll be rushing around. You'll kind of be in a panic the first few times you do this. And the first few times you do this, you'll think you're screwing it up but you won't be. Um, as you can see, this one's already been used. Ironic, it looks like this, isn't it? Laugh it up. Um, but we're gonna just roll with it and heat up the crack itself and the stick. All right, we got my heat gun, and uh, this is ba basically the, the main tool. I mean, you will need a grinder to clean things up and to cut the strips, but you could use a rasp and you could cut this, you know, plastic with anything, a knife if it's sharp enough, a saw, a hand saw or whatever. So really with this method, this is the heat gun or plastic welding method. So we're gonna fire this thing up. You know, it takes a while to heat up for the first minute or two not minute well first couple of seconds it's like a you know a, um hair dryer and then it starts getting really cooking i usually do it on the high setting and start to heat my stick before the boat itself and you'll start to notice that it'll get wet it'll get real wet looking and that's that's when it starts to you know, get real soft and sticky and to the temperature that you want to start operating with and welding at. But the thing is, you don't want to get it too hot and too melted because you'll break down the plastic and it won't, it won't work as well. So what I'm going to do now is continue to heat this. You'll start feeling it on the tip when it starts getting a little malleable. There it goes. All right, and roll it too because one side will stay cooled than the other. And then as you apply it, it won't go on evenly. So you want to keep rolling it too as you apply it. So now I'm going to start heating the crack. And as you can see, those knurls and uh, plastic splinters that were from the drilling are starting to melt away. And you can see the boat is starting to get a little shiny now 
Now at first you can hold the uh, heat gun pretty close to the hull and it won't really cause any worry. But as the boat starts to warm up, and you'll feel it, like it's starting to get hot. It's probably 100 degrees right now. Once it starts to feel a little sticky and tacky, don't hold it there long. These heat guns are extremely powerful, especially in a downward angle, because right now the, the, the breeze is blowing past this and going upwards. If you point it straight down, it blasts along the side of the hull and can really heat the hull up a lot quicker than you'll find, uh, you know, lightly hitting it every now and then. All right, so a little bit more on the hull. Like after we had warmed the hull up, you wouldn't want to be this close. But we're still uh, trying to bring it up to temperature. All right, let's see how it works. All right, now you should see blending of multiple colors. All right, so we're moving right along, keeping the hull at a good warm temperature. Shouldn't be too hot. a mallet or something you can lay on it and kind of compress the spreading when it contracts when it cools it'll pull it back together and it'll help with uh deformation and the really thin boats they'll deform a lot and it'll scare the crap out of you but i mean it's plastic you can bring everything back to the right shape you just got to know what to do all right, so I was gonna cut a new stick, but I found another small one. This, this is more along the line of the, the perfect size. I made that one a little bit big, just cause uh, the sliver I had left was roughly that size, so I just went with it. But if you're gonna cut them, cut them about that big. They're easy to handle, they're easy to twirl, and they don't take as much time to heat up. You can really work with them a little bit better. The easier this to heat up, it, it, the easier it'll be to match the hull temperature because if it's you know a big sticks needing a alright alright here we are fully welded up just letting it cool and then we're gonna flip it and repeat the process on the other side. And once we're done with that, we're gonna grind and smooth. Move the seat pan out of the way. I don't know how the view is there. Sorry if it's not any good, but I gotta kinda hold this position so I don't burn myself or the boat. This side's gonna be pretty easy to heat up, considering that, you know, the, uh, the welded side on the other side is already hot, so this side will transfer heat pretty well and should go really fast. I'm just gonna pretty much heat all the excess and melt that stick in there, and then once that's all taken care of, I'll grind down the inside. So stay with me and we'll see the after effect. Same as the other side. All right, just open the garage, let this thing cool off. Uh, as you can see, I broke down all the excess, got it all smoothed out and flattened, took to all the weld all the way around. I'm just letting it cool down and, and reshaping. I uh, had the rubber mallet, you know, just applying pressure so when it dries, it, um, you know, contracts, cools, and, and pulls the weld a little closer together. You can still see it's a little bit wavy, but uh, we're obviously gonna grind all this down and smooth it all out. That way when it goes back together, it's, uh, you know, ship shape. All right, so you just get a regular grinder and uh, just begin to brush it up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now you see it's all done, and if you want to make it even look prettier, just hit it lightly, put it on low actually. Blow a little bit of heat on it, 
It'll brighten up the color a little bit. The grinding doesn't add a white to it, but you know, you can see some sanding marks and some sanding coloration. Hit this with a little bit of heat and we'll breathe a little more color back into it. And here we are on the inside. All right, now as you can see, it's really smooth. There's no more wave in it. And uh, the hull is taking shape again now that it's cooled and it was on the concrete ground. So now all we gotta do is just uh, take all the components that we took out of it, put it back together, wrap it up, and we're good to go. It's all right if you're gonna be a little rough with it. It's a whitewater kayak. You know, these things are made for abuse. So, all right, so a little trick I've learned over the years to get it all lined up is it can be a real pain in the butt to get these lined up with the holes on the inside of the seat pan. And so what I like to do is, as you saw, I got those connected first, the back strap ratchets. And what I do is I'll get it all in there nice and tight. I'll tighten these up as tight as I can go and I'll push the seat back as far as I can, which really makes it so that it's in the rails kind of stuck. Um, or a little bit more stuck than it would be if it was just free floating and then that way what happens is, is Once I line the holes up this thing can't like slide back and forth or twist side to side Because that can be a real pain in the ass you get one lined up You got to put the nut on on the underside the thing moves the holes don't line up and it becomes uh, a lot longer than it needs to be So that's a little trick that I've done and it kind of helps it from you know sliding around and stuff like that Like that thing's in there right now pretty good if I loosen those up didn't really um, position it in there and wedge it in there really tight with these straps being tight it would just flop around in there and it would probably take me 10 to 15 minutes each side which for a short job like this can be a pain in the ass so what I do first is I stick them through and make sure the holes line up and that the holes you know the screws are popping through the right spot which they are I can feel them on there either side they're not blocked in the way at all by the straps or any of the seat pan in the wrong position and what I will do is I'll pull one out and I'll slowly screw them into the plate on the underside one at a time evenly though like I won't screw this one all the way in of course because then the plate kind of tips up to one side and this thread won't line up so the best thing to do is put these right in there hold the piece um, with the nuts this piece right here underneath it and then slowly get them both to hook in before you uh, fasten it all the way up to the underside of this because if not you'll be sitting there walking back and forth getting one side getting the other side having to back them out it'll drive you absolutely insane after a few minutes of finagling got that side squared away so make sure these are nice and tight so you got some good squish on the rubber gaskets to keep that boat waterproof all right well, let's do the other side and we'll be 100 percent wrapped up all right so Boat's 100% back together and ready to hit the water.